Hello, dear Twain families and River Rafters. This is Mrs. Gonzalez, your principal. I know that many of you, like our staff, and I miss being together in person and attending our PTA family events. Luckily for us, our amazing Twain PTA continues to stay strong and plans educational family nights like today. Every month, we will have a combination of different topics, and we hope you can join us. So sit back, relax, and show us Zors by having an outstanding attitude, being respectful and safe during Zoom. Hola, querida familias de Mark Twain y Balseros del Río. Soy la directora Mrs. González. Sé que muchos de ustedes, como nuestro personal y yo, extrañamos estar juntos en persona y asistir los eventos familiares de PTA. Afortunadamente para nosotros, nuestro increíble PTA de Twain sigue siendo fuerte y planea noches familiares educativas como hoy. Cada mes tendremos una combinación de diferentes temas y esperamos que puedan acompañarnos. Así que siéntense, relájense y muéstrenos Zors teniendo una actitud excepcional, respetuosa y segura durante el Zoom. Gracias. Thank you. Hello. Black History Month is um, a commemoration, vocab word, for black activists, another vocab word, who took took their time out to go fight um, fight for what, what they feel is right. Like Martin Luther King had a speech that violence is not the answer and no segregation. We celebrate black people that helped us change history. It reminds us to be strong even in politics. Oy. What matters is what, what's inside of you and how you act to other people. Doesn't matter if you're black, if you're white, should always celebrate it because you know the, the the struggles black leaders went through in order for you to be here right now. Even though we may have the different skin color, we're still the same type of people, no matter what. And a lot of people, they don't see me for who I am. They see my outside appearance, but they don't see what I have on the inside. It's very hard to grow up knowing that you're black and you have a lot of personal prejudice against you. I see it on the TV and I'm like, is that gonna happen to my brother? Is that, is that gonna happen to my dad? And I always have that in the back of my mind every time that I'm home and they're not home. Black history is important to me because I have to remember where I came from and I have to remember who came before me. Because you have to look at the things that Martin Luther King Jr., Rosa Parks, and uh, Malcolm X did for us black people so people can't treat us unfairly because they think some type of belief. Because we're, we are all people and we need to stand up for our rights. There's still discrimination, there's still discrimination in all parts of the world, in all parts of the United States. We should still fight for what we believe and we should still fight for getting what's right. Hi, uh, good um, uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, Ms. Gonzalez would join us when she can. I know she wanted to give us a few words for this uh, evening, so um, if she can, then I'll let her uh, speak to you as well. But uh, before we get started, I did want to note that, yes, in the registration, we had planned to offer Spanish audio for our audience, but we had minimum signups uh, requesting that. So. Uh, we decided to uh, put as many subtitles into uh, the event as we can so that our uh, speakers who uh, speak Spanish can enjoy the program. But we do pay for translation services. And so we thought that uh, instead of using that money tonight with, with the not a lot of signups, that we would shift that to somewhere else to sort of serve our Twain family. So, so look for the subtitles for those of you who need it. Um, I'm delighted to be here. This is our sixth family night of the year. I can't believe we've done that many. On tonight's program commemorates uh, contributions of Black Americans to U.S. history uh, and celebrates African American heritage. I'm Nikel Price, president of the uh, national award-winning 
Mark Twain Elementary PTA. And I'm joined by a new co-host tonight who looks quite familiar to me. Who are you, co-host? So I am Devin Price, who is in the Ferris class, and I'm in the fifth grade. Ah, nice to see you. Nice to meet you, Nevin. Thank you. Thank you for joining us this evening. Um, as we continue on, uh, this is an interactive event. So there's an opportunity for you to participate by putting things in the chat box when there's time to do that. So uh, you can do that throughout the program. We ask that you be respectful uh, with comments in the chat box. But feel free to put things in the chat box and engage in our program tonight. We are recording this um, because we do record these to be shared um, on our uh, Lawndale District YouTube site. You can see all our previous uh, family life events. Uh, so I wanted to talk about the students in the earlier video uh, were from New York. I think that was filmed about four years ago, but I wonder what the students of Lawndale might say, you know, about Black History Month and its importance about their experience today. You know, what do you think? I think they'll have something to say? I mean, yeah, I think I think, I think you're right, Nevin, I think you're right. Um, when the many contributions of Black citizens are included in the stories and documents of US history, uh, these Black History Month may no longer be needed. But we learned about hidden figures like NASA research mathematician, Katherine Johnson. Hidden figures like that still remain. Uh, we're going to spend the next hour together uh, exploring Black history, including some local history, sharing some personal stories, and playing a family-friendly game of Jeopardy, hosted by Nevin Trebek over here. He refused to wear the mustache, but that's right. Um, and we'll hear, um, like I said, stories from our community. I'm gonna see if Ms. Gonzalez is on yet. If she is, then we'll invite her in to say a few words. And if not, then we'll keep going. I don't see her in, so we'll move forward. So our first family story from the evening is um, from one of our Mark Twain parents, Don Jones. Let's check out this video from Dawn. My name is Dawn Jones. I am an educator. Um, I work for Los Angeles Unified School District, and I'm a mom of an eight-year-old, soon to be nine-year-old. My family is part of the Mark Twain community um, and has been for several years. My daughter goes there now. Um, several of my nieces have also gone there in the past. I grew up in Gardena. Um, just right down the road from here. The house I, I'm living in now is the house I was born in, and I recently bought the house from my mom, so I'm back there again, full circle. It's very similar to the way it was back then, to be honest, but I would say overall, it's very racially diverse. Elementary school, I went to 186th Street School. There was actually a school in my neighborhood, but we didn't go there, so my parents wanted us to go to a school that they felt would be better educationally for us. You know, historically, schools in majority black neighborhoods, um, they have a tendency to get um, the idea that they're not a good school. Um, so I didn't really get a chance to go to my neighborhood school, so I really didn't go to school with a lot of my friends that lived in the neighborhood. We were, we took the bus, my brother and I. I would say the whole time we were there, there were probably only four blacks in the school and we were two of them. It didn't feel strange to me because that was really all I knew. I didn't feel a sense of not belonging just because we made friends and that, again, that was just what we knew. When I, as I get older, I realized that, you know, I really wish we would have had more experiences. Um, we had, I had one black teacher, Miss Sears. Um, she was my third grade, I believe, teacher. And so I, that was really it growing up. So as we went to junior high school and high school, um, it became more mixed where there were more blacks, but we still weren't the, the majority, I would say. One thing I did appreciate about growing up with such a racially diverse um, group of students that I went to school with was that I always felt comfortable around everyone. So one of the summers when I was in high school, they had an Upward Bound program at USC that my mother signed me up for. And it was in that program that I had a roommate. We lived on campus. It was a really great experience. And she mentioned this school called Spelman, um, that it was a black college. And I had never heard of black colleges before. I didn't know they existed, knew nothing about them. So she talked about it was a black women's college. It was in Atlanta. And ever since then, I was like, I want to go there. I really felt like I just wanted to have that experience to be around um, just my people. I know my mom encouraged me. I mean, she was okay with it. She wasn't like, oh, wow, that's great. I mean, because to be honest, I don't know that she knew, you know, about the college before then. I was the only one on my mom's side of the family. 
really the first one to to go to college. So when I got to Spelman, it was a bit of a culture shock a little bit because I realized that there were black people who had, who were rich, you know, to be honest, that weren't famous. That was really my first experience with seeing real people whose parents were doctors. You know, their parents were lawyers, their parents were judges, and I'm like, whoa, like you have some money. You know, it was really different for me. Um, so at, at first I felt like I was out of place, which is weird. I felt like I belonged, but I felt like I didn't, um, that I didn't fit in, but I met my people. You know, I met some people and I met, uh, ironically, people from California, from Oakland. Um, and I felt like, oh yes, you know, there were people that kind of had the same experience. I think historically black colleges are really important just because it's nice to belong and it's nice to learn about your culture in a way that you feel validated and respected and like you're the focus. I think schools even now, they weren't meant to teach us. Even now today, the black kids or the black and brown kids really don't get a fair shake in terms of the, what's in the history books or what's in any books. I really think it's important that we have these schools that validate you and um, that you can go to and feel like you're a priority. You know, one of the things, like when I went to school, I didn't realize, you know, that there were any black, I mean, I knew, but I guess I never knew that there were any black doctors or lawyers. It was not, it was something where that was the, that was the outlier, like, right? That wasn't the norm. Um, but I think it's important for kids to see that, you know, people experiencing wealth and people doing great things aren't just um, people that you see on TV. I think it's important that kids know, and people, not just kids, that they know and what you come from, because then you can be proud of it and know that you can achieve it. I feel like in an ideal world, everyone's contributions would be part of the books. Everyone's contributions would be, there would be equity in, in terms of education. So there wouldn't be, you know, majority white contributions. And that's honestly what we see. Um, I do see it at at schools, um, even, even in schools, in, tip, in majority black schools, they're still not, teaching our history um, and and I, and I say our history in terms of you know putting us in the books like making us a part of the history you know when you read about certain events that happened in, in life or even certain things are wa um, washed over um, I have friends that teach in Atlanta today just in an assignment that was last week someone was asked the question um, what do you think the perspective of the plantation owner was versus the, pe the perspective of the slave. And I was like, that's ridiculous. Um, because even when you look at certain words, like calling them a plantation owner versus a slave master, and then calling the person a slave, which is, um, we try to get away from words that make it like that's who they are. So we were trying to use words that instead of calling them a slave, they were enslaved. You know, people who were enslaved, like because it takes their humanity away from them when you call them slaves. When I think about people in black history, I've never really focused on a specific person. I'm really just in awe of the resilience of the people, our people, my people from the, the past that were able to overcome such adversity to become something, um, you know, to, to live through segregation, to live through slavery, and to live through someone telling you you're nothing. I can't even imagine. And the fact that people were able to grow up back then and become doctors, to become lawyers, to become neurosurgeons and just be amazing people. Like it's amazing to me. Being a black woman has made me be a fighter, um, be someone that I feel like um, wants to prove the stereotypes wrong and not let anything hold me back because of the color of my skin. I teach the same for my daughter. We can be, um, you know, doctors, lawyers, president even, you know. Um, one day and now vice president, you know? So there's nothing holding us back. You know, I wish that people knew that black people are, they're the same. You know, we, we care about our kids too. We have feelings too. We have desires and wishes and dreams. You know, there's a lot of stereotypes that go around um, as if people don't care, but we do care, you know, but we weren't given the same opportunities, you know? And so some people, I just want people to get to know people for who they are, like to, to really understand that we have a lot more in common than we have 
um, that, that's different and understand that, you know, people are the product of their environments and, and a lot of times it's not their fault. I think the one thing that I would just like to say is that, you know, no matter how you grew up or how, what you were taught, that at a certain age or at a certain time, just make your own decisions for yourself. You know, don't, don't believe what other people tell you about someone. Really get to know them yourself and form your own opinions. You know, search yourself and see if you be aware of any biases you have. And if you know, uh, if you've done something and you, you know, if you know that, oh man, you know, if something hits you in the heart like that's been wrong, you know, make a vow to change it. You know, change it and do better. You know, there's a saying, when you know better, do better. Don Jones, that was rich with so much information. Thank you for sharing your story, your journey from elementary school to a college, historically black college, on the other side of the country that you had not even heard of, you know, when you were growing up, but you were brave enough, your family supported you going across the country to go to college. That sounds like it was a really great experience that allowed you to see something new, see what was possible, and then also share that, um, those possibilities with your daughter as well. So thank you for that. My parents are still waiting for me to return from college. You know, I was one of those people who went away and didn't come back. I know you're in the audience now, parents, but <laughs> I think we're doing great. But yeah, I'm still supposed to be returning home at some point. Um, but next I want to share um, a little bit more with you. Um, about uh, ancestry, just African American heritage. You know, um, Nevin, your dad and I were born in two different states. We're actually not from California. I'm from Florida originally. Your dad's from where? Indianapolis. Indianapolis in Indiana. And honestly, both of our families have lived in the U.S. for quite a long time. But um, unlike many families uh, who came to America recently or even um, in the past. They, they, may they may still have uh, ties to their ancestry. They may still know who their ancestors are. You know, their family trees, which we learned about last uh, month, you know, pretty well developed. You know, they have the names and even some pictures that go along with them. But many African-American families, you know, aren't able to identify, name, uh, locate uh, their family trees when you go really deep into the tree. There's families that may have arrived here over 400 years ago, you know, uh, you know, brought here at that time. And so, you know, we don't always get a chance to trace our tree, but it was quarantine time last summer and I had a lot of time on my hands and that's what I spent some of my time doing, just sort of getting back to my family tree, which I had started. So I had a lot of time to do that. And so I wanted to talk about a little bit about our family tree, right? So let's talk about that. So, this is Nevin and Quentin. Quentin is my other son at Twain. They look like they're really working hard while they're distance learning, doing a great job there, distance learning. But we started to talk about them. Uh, so Nevin and Quentin, you know, Quentin, I know you're watching. That's where it says you on the screen. That's you, right? So we are all descendants. We're all descendants, which means we come from someone before us, parents before us, great grandparents, grandparents. You know, there were people who lived before us that allowed us to be here today. And then some of us will be um, ancestors to families that we have, right? We'll all be ancestors, but in particularly, someone may call you granddad, great granddad one day, or, you know, et cetera. So we all descendants, then one day we'll be ancestors. So, but I wanted to search for some of our ancestors that are pretty far back in this line. So, so here we are. Here's your parents here on the left of the screen. And we were out voting and so we're quarantined safe. We have a little dog there. And on the right of the screen is who? Your grandparents. So that's uh, your dad's parents at the top and you all at the bottom. That's when we were able to travel and see them. Uh, and so there's so much that we can learn about all of our trees. Our trees on your dad's side goes pretty far, um, but we're gonna follow uh, the tree that uh, sort of went down this path on last summer. The dogs in the school spirit, wearing that Twain hat. Yep, dogs in school spirit. So Nevin, going from the bottom, that's you with, you know, my parents, which are your grandparents. Mm -hmm. And then that led us to your great grandparents, which happens to be, you know, my dad's side of the family. So these are your great grandparents. You know, I know them, but you didn't meet them. You know, they're the very long, wonderful life, wonderful people. I went a little further. To your great great 
great great grandparents, a little bit of resemblance. We were able to still have pictures. You know, when my family found out I was doing this, I've been doing it for some time. They started to actually send me more pictures that we could put in our tree so that we can actually collect the pictures from our ancestors. So these are your great great grandparents, and we actually have pictures of them. So then we go a little bit further. Great, great, great grandparents. Now this is when so far the pictures have ended. You know, I mentioned that, you know, we, a lot of African-Americans aren't able to really trace their, their, their family trees, um, even to have pictures, but we went pretty far. Um, sometimes the records don't show actual pictures of people, but there are pictures of when they were here. So this great, great, great grandparent here, we have both um, both grandparents' names, but what does that say on his, uh, his tombstone? It but says, it is a record of his life. It says St. Bernard Stevens. St. Bernard Stevens, age 65. Now, that was a discovery because saint sounds pretty important, you know. Uh, at, we had heard the name, but we had never heard it with, with saint in front of it. So that was really interesting. Now, I really wanted to go and dig into this a little bit more, you know, and I will do that. But that was one of the things I discovered in sort of my tree that there may be a really interesting story about one of our ancestors being called Saint something, right? Sounds important. And then, you know, we went a little bit further to who is this? That is Gus Stevens. Gus Stevens, this document here, great, your great, 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 great grandparents. We found a document. This is all documents that are available, you know, uh, through different ways to search ancestries. There's different groups that get together and do this for families. Um, but technology has allowed us to get to documents that may be in libraries and museums and such where we can sort of find things that tell us about our family. So it's sort of like finding like clues and you go in and look for things. And this popped up uh, to able to find out who our, who your great, 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 great grandparents were. Uh, Gus and Mary, born in 1830 in Georgia. Now, 2021, 1830, how long ago was that? Quick, quick math. 191 years ago. 191 years ago, we're able to identify, at least by name, some of our ancestors that uh, lived. So, so that was a joy to find. I found that this summer, you know, I had started a tree a while back, but Finding that document this summer was a great thing. And then trying to talk to other family members to see if they knew anything else. Um, but a lot of these records that I found, they were able to find people's names and stuff, they were in what we called a census. Do you remember doing the census? Yeah. Yeah, back last April, there was a census. A lot of our district talked about it, school district talked about it a whole lot, about it, the census. And sort of just a record of who's in your household. And so and a lot of the documents that I was able to find, I could see who even some of those relatives that we saw, who all the siblings were, where they lived, what street they lived on. So those census records, you know, that people filled out hundreds of years ago. Yeah, they did it in paper. And it was like the writing, you know, sometimes a little off and things, but they did it in paper and thankfully someone scanned it. So now we can go look at it. Now it's all computerized now. So you even put in your name yourself in a census. You type your name in, how old you were, and then we press enter. So now that document for your descendants, when they say, hmm, ancestor Nevin, and I wonder where he lived, you know, you will appear in the census from 2000. But I just wanted to share that, you know, this journey of like finding ancestors, you know, a lot of us, you know, may not have this ability, but with technology now, there's a lot more out there where we can discover it. And so, if you're interested in tracing your ancestry, I would highly encourage anyone to do that. You know, there's a lot of groups that will help you find your relatives. You know, we also have a pretty deep tree on uh, your dad's side of the family too, but uh, we just went down this one for now. So that was really cool. So now you know who your fourth great grandfather was, and I hope we can go a little further. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, but let's continue on. So let's find out a little bit about history. Uh, I do know, you know, Miss Jones, when she spoke earlier, she kind of showed us a lot about, talked about how history and how, you know, she talked about our resilience, you know, as African-American people and, and how our stories may, you know, need to be shared. They should really be shared all year long. You know, we do have Black History Month, but the week was started, it was started as a week so that we could really 
make sure that we're at least acknowledging our history. And so the idea from Carter G. Wixon is that we wouldn't really need Black History Month or Black History Week because we would be celebrating and sharing our stories throughout the year. So in everything, there wouldn't be this lost history of maybe hidden figures. But, but yet still, we do still celebrate Black history. And so just wanted to share like a really fun video of some of our uh, Black historical figures. Now, I will tell you that I have a dancing thing that I like. Evan knows I dance around the house. And this video may cause you to get up and dance. Feel free to do that. Your cameras are off, but I hope you enjoy this video of um, Black history. It's that time again, let us all join in. We are celebrating Black people who change the world. It's that time again, let us all join in. We are celebrating Black people who change the world. All right, let's learn and celebrate. Black musicians are the reasons for great music we listen to, like hip hop and jazz, the blues, rap, R&B. So take time, explore, so you're not missing out on great music throughout history. Whitney Houston, now she could sing. Stevie Wonder's blind and his music is king. Prince played 27 instruments. There's so many incredible black musicians. So make sure you go and listen. It's that time of change the world it's that time again let us all join in we are celebrating black people who change the world being unique and using their brains are why the next list of people have great acclaim i'm gonna take a second to recognize the names of some black minds that went ahead and changed the game may jemison made space her quest megan markle is a royal philanthropist when you lose your way and need that GPS, go ahead and thank Dr. Gladys West. Then there's those who make magic with words. Maya Angelou is an uncaged bird. Her poetry is our great fortune, paving paths for poets like Amanda Gorman. Go ahead, Miss Amanda Gorman. It's that time again. Let us all join in. We are celebrating Black people who change the world. change the world black athletes are super strong for years they've been breaking records all day long ha, there's so many now and in the past like jesse owens who he ran so fast stephen curry hits that three-point shot ballerina missy copeland dances on her toes a lot serena williams plays tennis so bold simone biles flips and wins all the gold Ooh, let's move to the scene where black people shine like stars on screen of talk shows and more, she's queen. So take a bow to Oprah Winfrey. Michael B. Jordan, Denzel, and Shonda Rhimes are just a few who make all media shine. Celebrate black actors, that's the answer. Like Chadwick B., the first Black Panther. Wakanda forever. It's that time again. Let us all join in. We are celebrating black people who change the world. That time again, let us all join in. We are celebrating black people who change the world. Black freedom fighters took a stand to live in an equal and loving land. They worked so hard just to break through. So sit back and listen as I name a few. Martin L.K. Jr. had a dream to unify. Ruby Bridges at six told segregation goodbye. Rosa Parks took a stand by taking a seat. Stacey Abrams votes for equality. Kamala Harris, the first to ascend to a role where women have been absent. Miss Harris knows how to represent by becoming the first black Asian vice president. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. come on. The next man is the most Americana. He's super duper smart and he's smooth like a song. But the first black president, Barack Obama. And 
you're smooth like a samba. It's that time again. Change the world. It's that time again. Let us all join in. We are celebrating black people who change the world. It's that time again. Let us all join in. We are celebrating black people who change the world. It's that time again. Let us all join. Change the world. Black people who change the world. <laughs> <laughs> Embarrassing, but it did make me want to dance. I was dancing with this with the camera off, so. Uh, but I think that could be the next TikTok video. Let me, let me do. It. <laughs> no, not at all. Not at all. I think so. I think I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna not talk. Oh, yes. So, <laughs> well, that was fun. I hope you enjoyed that, but I really think you're going to enjoy this next segment because we have students from Twain and from Lawndale who actually did profiles of African American heroes themselves. So take a look at this. Hello, my name is Micah. I am going to tell you about one African American contributor that has impact history. <clears throat> Guy on Guy Bluford, first, Amer first African American in space in 1983. <clears throat> he flew far space shuttle missions and nine years logging 688 hours off the Planet. He conducted many scientific experiments while in space, including including studying of the effects of space flights, space flight on the human body. Hi, my name is May Jamison. I'm wearing a space suit. Because I was, I'm, I was an astronaut. I worked for NASA. There's a picture of me in my space suit. I was a part of the crew in a spaceship sh 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 shuttle endeavor, and here's a model of it. It says Dev Endeavor right here, and it says United States. Endeavor, United States. This is a little toy. Bye bye, toy. And this is a picture of the real one. What you probably don't know is I was the first African American woman to ever go into space. Yay, me! I've went around the whole earth 127 times. I know it seems like it should have been less. I was an astronaut for six years. Yay, me! But I really love to dance. I danced all the time, even in space. Da, 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 da. When I stopped working at NASA, I wanted everyone to learn about science. So I started a group, and I taught science all over the world. What's the group called? I want to say. I started the Jamison group so I could teach kids and older people all about science. I wrote many books and now I work with the United States government to help us travel the stars. Bye everybody! Hello, my name is Xavier. I'm going to tell you about two African American contributors that has impacted history. Floyd Norman. As a first black animator at Disney, he worked on Sleeping Beauty, Mulan, Toy Story 2, and more. He co-founded Vignette Films to make movies about black heroes and has, and has adored many books on cartooning anime.
animation techniques and the film industry. DJ Cool Herc. One of the founders of the hip hop music, he developed the song while DJing parties he drew in the Bronx. New York in the 1970s, he invented the merry-go-round technique, using two turntables to extend a song's instrumental break. Hi, my name is Brooke and this is why I chose Sky Jackson to be my hero. Sky Jackson is an American author, uh, actress, and YouTuber. When she was in school, she was bullied for how short she was. She is best known for Jesse and Bunt. I also think we are very alike because we both are very bubbly and very sweet. I, she, she's also very fierce and very passionate. I really like the way her hair is. I love the way how she, she's not afraid of anything. She never backs down and she stands there proud. I also think she, she is the best actress in the world and also one of the most patient people in the world because when she was on Jesse and Bucked, she had to take many, 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 many takes. I also think she's a really dog lover because she has a dog named Otis and she loves him very much. She she also is very is very friendly and um very funny because she she almost lost it almost everything. She was turned into a meme, and it was a very funny meme. That's why I chose Guy Jackson to be my hero. Hi, my name is Colin Kaepernick. I was born on November 3rd, 1987 in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. After I was born, my birth mother, Heidi Russo, put me up for adoption from my current parents. Rick Kaepernick and Teresa Kaepernick adopted me to call me their son. My birth father's identity is unknown. My current parents decided to adopt me after losing two of their sons to heart defects. When I was eight, I began playing youth football. In high school, I, I was a, a 4.0 GPA student. In addition to football in high school, I played basketball and baseball. In, col I played, in college, I played college football for the Nevada Wolfpack. I was actually drafted in the major baseball league draft by the Cubs, but didn't sign because I decided to continue playing college football instead. In college, I also had a 4.0 GPA. In the 2011 draft, I was selected by the 49ers. Although I started as the backup quarterback, the next season I was starting due to an injury. In the third preseason game in 2016, I sat during the national anthem. In the 49ers' fourth preseason game, I knelt during the anthem. I knelt as an act against racism. In the regular season, I knelt every game which a team, in which a teammate joined me. After that, others started kneeling too. As a result, the NFL and the NFL Players Association reached an agreement for the league to provide financial support to players' community activism and dealers. In the off season, the 49ers said they would release me. So I opted out of my contract and became a free agent. To this day, I am not in the NFL. I hope that one day I can throw a pass in the NFL once again. Oh, hola. Yo soy el Tito Alfonso Shelby. Hello, I am our Tito Alfonso Shelby. I was reading about Black Riders of America. Anyway, I was born on January 24th, 1874 in San Juan, Puerto Rico. My dad was German and my mom was black. When I was in school, my fifth grade teacher told me that black people don't have heroes or history. I thought my people must have done something great over the years that history teachers did just not teach. So when I was 17, I was brave and I moved to New York by myself. Later, I started to collect books, letters, music, and art about black people from around the world. I also wrote a book about black experiences. I was determined to make books and find things about black people so we can know how great black people are. 
advocate and a historian and activist. Some people call me the one of the fathers of black history. Many of the things that I collected became part of a library in New York at Fisk Anniversary in Nashville, Tennessee. Many years later, I became ill and died on June 10, 1938. My co but my collection still remains. There are now over 10 billion items on black history at the Schomburg Center in New York. Well, wasn't that great? You look like I liked it. Dude, double take. Um, that was wonderful. You know, if there are any people that you learned about new today, put those in the chat. If you learn about someone new in Black history that you hadn't heard before, or, you know, just let us know that because it's, it's wonderful to know that there's so many people, uh, so many more people that uh, that we can learn about. Speaking of which, you know, there's a lot of great books you saw some of the students reading from, and I know that our school district does have more books with multicultural characters in it. It's just good to see yourself in stories, just everyday stories, right? You know, not necessarily about history, but, you know, I want to pick up a book where I feel like I can be in a story because the story has someone that looks like me. And so that's what we're going to sort of talk about next. What are we doing next, Nemo? So next, I'm going to tell me about their book. It's in reading, I'm every good thing. Yes. I am every good thing by Derek Barnes, illustrated by Gordon C. J. To Tamir Rice, Rayvon Martin, E.J. Bradford, Jordan Edwards, Michael Brown, Jordan Davis and Julian Mallory, D. E. To my son Gabriel, the all little brothers like him, G. C. D. I am a nonstop ball of energy, powerful and full of life. I am a go getter, a difference maker, a leader. You know why I'm every good thing that makes the world go round? You know, like gravity. The glow of moon beams over a field of brand new snow. I'm good to the core, like the center of a cinnamon roll. Yeah, that good. I am skateboard tricks, scrape knees and elbows. But you know what? I'm right back on my feet again. I am one eye open. One eye closed. Peeking through a microscope, gazing through a telescope, checking out the spaces around me, and plotting out those far off places I have yet to go, but will. I am a gentleman and a scholar. I am kind and polite, like yes ma'am and yes sir. Helping my grandmother across the street and saying bless you when a stranger has to sneeze. I am a Cool breeze, a perfect paper airplane that glides for blocks, for miles, forever. I am a roaring flame of creativity. I am a lightning round of questions and a star-filled sky of solutions. I'm an explorer, planting a flag on every square foot of this planet where I belong. I'm a sponge soaking up information, knowledge, and wisdom. I'm one and all, and I'm all ears. I am Saturday mornings in the summertime. I have two bounces and a front flip off the diving board. I am hilarious. I am the life of the party. I am that smile forming on your face right now. And the boom back, boom, boom, back. When the bass line thumps and the kick drum jumps. And the perfect beat, the perfect rhyme, keeping everything on point and always on time. But well, you already knew that. I'm a grand slam, bases fully loaded. I'm a nasty two-handed duck holding on to the rim. Just to remind you see that, I'm still the man, believe that. I'm the undisputed champion. I am a highlight reel of magnificence. I am the celebration, the applause, 
and a standing ovation. I am victory. I am a brother, a son, a nephew, a favorite cousin, a grandson. I am a friend. I am real. I am tight hugs. It has a hold, a shoulder to cry on. If you have to. I hope you never have to. I am here. Although I'm something like a superhero every now and then, I am afraid. I'm not what they might call me, and I will not answer to any name that is not my own. I am what I say I am. I am that sound in the forest when a mighty tree falls. I am waves crashing gently on the shore. I am a force of nature, a miracle, a blessing. I am brave. I am hope. I am my answer to this wildest dream. I am worthy of success, the respect, of safety, of kindness, of happiness. And without a shadow of doubt, I am worthy to be loved. I am worthy to be loved. You are worthy to be loved. Quentin, thank you for sharing that story, the favorite in our household. I love that story because it's sort of just about everyday life. You know, it's just about trying to be a kid, you know, some of the things you feel as a kid, but you know, and what that's like. And I love that. So it's a universal story for all kids. That's why I like it. But next, rolling quickly, Nevin Trebek is here to take us into a Q&A portion. We're doing it different this time. We're doing it Jeopardy style. So what he's gonna do, he's gonna explain to you uh, how it's gonna go. Be ready to use the chat to give your answers. Everybody's on the same team, uh, but get ready to do some Black History Jeopardy. Okay, guys. So I'm Nevin, and we're going to do some Black History Jeopardy. We are the team called Team Twain. So that's what our team is going to be called. And then um, we, we have 15. So after I reveal the question, you guys have 15 seconds to put it in a chat box. And then whoever puts it in first, I'm, I'm going to say their names out loud. And then, and then we're going to move, move on to the next question kind of really fast, though. And then, um, and then, uh, and then after that, we're gonna go to the next one. There are, there are three categories. There are three categories, which is young Black history, mm -hmm. inventions, and local Black history, meaning around here in mm -hmm. Montville. Yes, local Black history. All right, I'm ready. And then, and then the, the numbers are all based on like how hard it's gonna be. So like a hundred, it might be the easier ones, and five hundred is gonna be the harder ones. So, so we're gonna so we're gonna start with young black history for one hundred. Young black history for hundred. Nevin Trebek. Nicholas Claxton. Nicholas Jackson, a fifth generation black cowboy, became a twenty twenty junior world champion at thirteen for riding on this very energetic animal. Guys, what fifteen seconds. Very energetic animal. Put your answer in the chat. Two. Keep your own score. This Three. is for hundred points. Four, five, and Don Jones put bull first. Followed by Yuri Gamboa and Crystal Mosler. Okay. Mosler. The answer is bull. The answer is bull. Okay. Give yourself points. If you said bull, go ahead. You know, give yourself the points. We'll go on to the next question. Yeah. Well, next up. Um, Daisy Williams is a 26 year old who became what type of out of the world scientist after being named in. In, after being enrolled in an honors math class by mistake. So enrolled in a math class by mistake and she became- And Brandon Church, oh. Brandon Church is correct. Astrophysicists, astrophysicists. But what's the answer? It is a rocket scientist. After she was enrolled in a math class by mistake, honors class, it led her to be a rocket scientist. That was a nice mistake. Hey, yeah. that's a good turnaround from a mistake. So what's next? It's a rocket scientist. All right, up next, 400, 400 points. 
first African American in Olympic history to win the individual all around event in a very popular sport. So if you if you guys were around earlier, you would have seen the answer. So it's just to make sure you guys were paying attention. Saw some of the clues. First African American to win all around. around. Put Gabby Douglas. And that is correct. It is Gabby Douglas. It, so it, it was it was kind of hard between Gabby Douglas and Right, right. right. So. One more thing too. Simone's yeah. doing her thing too, but this this answer was Gabby Douglas. All right. All right. Who's next? Five hundred points. Keep your scores. Something in my competition. Complexion. <laughs> the name of this type of business started by Los Angeles student Chris Rogers after he was going to school. So this is another flip the script. Turn a negative to a positive. So what type of business did she start? And Don Jones is correct again. That's an incredible Don Jones, thing. you're fast. I yes, promise you, she did not know the questions. <laughs> T-shirt, clothing, yes. What's the answer? Clothing business. clothing business. Very nice. All right. What's next? Next, we're moving on to inventions from 100. Well, this, this one's pretty easy. Blades are these, is this type of chip. I should see. So someone invented blades. Don Jones is right again. Potato chip. Well, there's some other names. With Don yeah, and... Withon. Gretchen Jansen, hey. Taylor Reed. My dad. Your dad, he answered. He didn't cheat either. Right, so a black person invented potato chips. Oh, I did not know that as a kid, but so, everybody's eating potato chips. So, it is true. So, potato chips were invented when George Crum was annoyed by a customer's demand. So, he cut a potato very thin, fried it, making it too thin to eat with the fork because the customer wanted to eat the fried with the fork. After all, the customer was satisfied with the, with, the, with the chips after they were accidentally created. They, they were originally called Saratoga chips. So accidental brilliance. Everybody likes them. Everybody doesn't like a potato chip. Keep your score. All right, I don't know what your scores are, but let's go on to 300, inventions. 300, Mr. Trebek. You put your ball on this when you're about to swing. You put your ball on this when you're about to swing. Hmm. I think you have to think a little bit. Uh, oh, wow. Yeah, that's my people. So Brandon Church was first with the golf tee. There's a few, right? The golf tee. The little itty bitty. The golf tee. Tee that the ball sits on before the swing. I have not been giving you those points. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that was invented by George Grant. Was like, in, 18, yes. in 1899. That's a long time ago. Yeah. So he looked for a way to improve it. A lot of inventions come from, how can I make something better? Yep. This school suits a popular treat into chunks. Into chunks, not chucks. Chunks. Chunks. Something that scoops uh, a so popular the, treat. What's the were, popular treat? What's the popular treat? So it, so it was ice cream and Andrew Bennett got it first. Oh, great. Ice cream scooper. That's something that I love ice cream, by the way. Yeah, you know that. Who doesn't like ice cream? But scooping it out was probably difficult. It was very know, difficult. So. It was very difficult. Mm, very nice. Makes it easier. So uh, Alfred L. Cradle invent create the ice cream scoop when he saw ice cream servers struggling to make the ice cream in chunks. So, so they had to serve the ice cream and they were all like, it was really, really hard to make it into chunks. It was wood in 1897. That's yeah, it was in 1897 and it was wood. Okay. Let's see. I'm not keeping my score. I'm here with you. This popular one, our, our choice, sprays water at others. For 500 points. 500 what points. water choice sprays and water And Brandon Church is right again. You guys are fast on the gun. <laughs> and see, so super soakers. That's right. And actually, super soakers. let's listen. Let's learn about this person. It's not a local. So Lonnie Johnson got the idea in 1982 after he shot a stream of water across the room of reading a heat pump. Yeah, and you know, he's from Southern California. I think it's maybe California. Pasadena. Yeah, so... That invention is from a local company. Okay, what's the next category? Okay, local Black local History. Local Black History. For Robert Paul Miles is the first Black city councilman and mayor of what local city? What local city? Hmm, Robert Paul and Miles, the first Black city Okay, uh, there's a lot. Okay, stop, stop, stop. stop. <laughs> no, okay, Ann Phillips. I would, hope, I would hope we would know the answer to this. Mr. Mayor is actually on tonight, I believe. So yes, we have local history. Very close to us. Anne Phillips. Yeah, first. Anne Phillips was first. Okay. Next up. Yeah. Oh, actually, I think you're gonna give the answer. Okay. Um, this this neighboring Beach City once included an African American community where the Bruce family owned and 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 operated the South Bay's Black Resort. 
It was a black resort in the South Bay. And Manhattan Beach. Yes, it was Manhattan Beach. Correct by Don Jones. Yes, Manhattan Beach. So that may be a little bit more known history, but there's actually a monument there. Yeah. Uh, and it's called Bruce Beach now, but that land had a resort on it where Black families could come, where they could enjoy swimming and enjoy the beach, you know, mm -hmm. over in Manhattan Beach now. So, all right, well, how many more left? What's next? Okay, so continuing, it is, I think we're on 400, yeah. Yeah, 400. So, se several South Bay cities once held rules for posted signs. So blacks and other minorities to get out of our town by what time of day? Okay, now this is one of those rules that just okay, and wasn't that great, but what this Thong, is our history. Mm -hmm. What Thong got it right, it was sundown. You all are really quick. Did we get the answers out? No, we did not get okay. the answers out. It is sundown, sundown towns. You know, but I think there's a movie that sort of talks about that recently. But So the South Bay did have some cities where, you know, they were called sundown towns where it wasn't necessarily safe for Black people to be able to be out. Okay. So this Southern California city was established in 1781 by 44 in individuals, 26 of whom which were of African descent. So what Southern California city was established in 1781 by individuals, including from African people from African descent? Uh, I'm pretty sure it's one of them. Oh, we're slow. Nobody's answering. I think this is in the curriculum. Is it in our curriculum in school? What grade was that? Okay, who? Let's see. Roll up. Who? Who has their answer? <laughs> it is Los Angeles. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's Los Angeles. It's Los Angeles. It Los Angeles. Yes, and some of that that is in our curriculum actually. Um, yes. you know, we we learned um, that there were people of African descent that actually were here. And I think that was even before um, before um, the United States had California, but uh, the city before it was known as we know it today, you so know, was founded. In so. total, um, so, so, so the counter is not up to, uh, uh, up to date, but you guys had 3,700 points in total. Oh, so you could have gotten 3,700 points. Okay, total your scores up. Let's see your total scores in the chat. Do you know? Yes, P P O Pico. That's right, Brandon Church. He was a black Mexican. Pico Boulevard, but yes, he's the sin, he's a descendant from one of the founders um, of Los Angeles. So what did you guys keep your scores? Total of 3,700 points. Oh, I see some 500 is the high score. I know. It was for fun. It was for fun. Okay, so it's actually time to wrap up. It's time to wrap up, Nevin. It's time to wrap up. So it's time to wrap up. And uh, I just want to say that um, part of what we do every family night is we do a giveaway. Spin the wheel. Yeah, we spin the wheel. We do a giveaway. Uh, and we give away the book that we share today to some lucky person that's name is going to be announced in just a second. Go ahead, spin the wheel, um, uh, Crystal. No, you can't win. <laughs> Thanks for hosting Black History Jeopardy. <laughs> Kathy Burris. Kathy Burris, congratulations. You are the recipient of tonight's book. And we will get in touch with you. We have your information. Uh, we got to get in touch with you about that book. As well as, I think we usually add a little twin gear there too. We do add some twin gear. A little sweatshirt or something, but yes, we do. But tonight, thank you for everyone for joining us. We're right at the end of time. Um, I appreciate all of you coming. Uh, this was a night to really talk about contributions. We tried to pack a lot into this night. <laughs> uh, so much of what Don said um, on her video. I'm gonna, Don, I'm gonna, I don't know if you want to come on. I just want to say thank you. Um, but so much of what she said on her video, there's so much more I want to talk about, but we only have an hour. But I hope you learned something tonight. I hope you enjoyed the little Jeopardy and the videos from other students. Uh, I, I do appreciate that. Mrs. Gonzalez, I don't know if you wanna come on and say anything. I'll, and, and Dawn, I'm gonna invite you to, if you would like to, you and Brooke, come on and say a little something. Yep. Uh, as we're closing out, feel free to turn your cameras on. 
Hey, thank you. Thank you. Don, it's so great to see you here. <laughs> I just want to personally thank um, all of you for being here. Definitely let you know that, you know, we are PTA that has been awarded several uh, successes and without the support of our PTA, our families being engaged, these nights would not be a possible. So a shout out Zors, you know, because Zoom is definitely alive at Mark Twain to uh, Nevin Price and Don and the panelists that join us and the families that are joining us today. But definitely a Zors shout out to Nick Hal Price, our current uh, president and Crystal Mosler, who joined us this year as a kinder family and has kept our PTA alive. So yes. thank you so much for being with us tonight. Don, thank you for thank sharing. Thank you for the opportunity. I appreciated it. <laughs> and Brooke, nice to see you. I see you there. Thank you for sharing about Sky uh, with your video. It was great to see you on video, everyone. So listen, we do have more PTA family nights coming. So in April, we have Arab, Arab American Heritage Night. We're still looking for families uh, who might want to share their story, similar to what we did tonight. If their child wants to read a book, we'll do that. Um, we also have Asian Pacific Heritage. That's in May as well. Uh, next month, we do have a second family fitness night that's coming up on the 23rd. So look out for information on that. I do want to mention that we are still in our Loved Ones Day letter writing campaign. So if anyone still wants to submit letters to the community, that's what we're doing this year since we're virtual learning. Uh, make sure you're dropping those off in the red box at mail distribution days on Mondays and Wednesday. The last day is March 11th. And then we'll distribute those out into the community as well. So um, thank you for joining us. I really appreciate it. Um, just before, there's a video as we exit. I did want to share one video. We wanted to keep this night very light, but we don't want to ignore uh, last summer and the things that transpired over the summer around uh, race relations. So there is a video that we will share for Amanda Gorman just talking about talking about race. It's a very difficult subject at times to talk about, but I know sometimes you want to do that for our families, you know, being able to figure out how to have those discussions with our kids um, and everything like that. That's another PTA event, maybe in the future. Um, but before we left, I did not want to. Oh, first of all, thank you, Never for co-hosting. Thank you, uh, Ms. Burris, for she says, thank you, Never for co-hosting. You did a great job. Maybe we'll hire you back, Mr. Kermit, for another night. But um, I do want to say, just take a look at this video. This will be how we close out. It's just something to think about. And we hope we'll see you next month. So thank you for joining. Thank you, Ms. Gonzalez. <laughs> Writing poetry is my favorite way to use my own voice. This is a poem I wrote called Talking Gets Us There. It's normal to notice what makes us different because what makes us different is what makes each of us so special. There's beauty in every type of face and in every type of freckle from the curl of your hair to the color of your skin, no one is exactly the same, not even twins. But across time and place, people have been treated unfairly just because of their race. So heroes get into good trouble. They have to struggle for a long while, but when they win, it's worth every mile. People of color still experience racism today. So it's up to all of us to say enough is enough, to speak out with all our hearts. And that starts at home. It starts with asking questions about race when we're taught about it together. I know we can tackle racism. But first, we have to talk about it. <laughs>